Kaisab Lake, whose name means freshwater lake in the Khmer language, is also known as the Great Lake. It is located in the center of Cambodia and is the largest permanent freshwater lake in Asia. According to French scientists, it was probably born 5,000 to 6,000 years ago. The Tonle Sap Lake grows and narrows according to the seasons and terrain quantity. The lake is connected to the Mekong by the Tonle Sap River. The two rivers meet in Phnom Penh at a confluence known as the Four Arms or Chekto Mok. The depth of the lake varies from 1 to 2 meters to 8 to 10 meters according to the season. Each year in June, when the rainy season begins and the Mekong swells due to the monsoon and snow melting in the Himalayas, the water level increases very quickly. So the size of the lake is multiplied by 4. In November, when the rains decrease, the Tonle Sap River's current is reversed again and the lake empties into the Mekong River. The light blue area represents the Tonle Sap in the dry season. The red area shows the zones flooded in 2006 and the dark blue area delineates the maximal extent of the flood. This unique phenomenon of the river's reversal combined with extensive floodplains has given rise to unique flora and fauna. The Tonle Sap Lake is thus an exceptional source of fertility and this explains the incredible vitality of Cambodia's inland fisheries. The Tonle Sap Lake's fresh waters are among the richest in fish in the world. Seasonal flooding of plains is the main reason for this abundance of fish. This flooding allows exchange between the aquatic and terrestrial ecosystem. In addition, fish species that have evolved over thousands of years adapted their life cycles to the rhythm of the water. Thus they derive maximum benefit from the food sources and habitats created by the river's flood. To understand the interaction between floods, migrations and reproduction, let us take the example of a small village located by the lake before and during the rainy season. The people living around and on the Tonle Sap have adapted to this unique environment. Very tall traditional houses on piles are mixed with floating houses and houseboats, the latter being used by the poorest fishermen. The people Kompong Pluk village in the south of Siem Reap province move according to the season. They live in their houses on piles during the rainy season from 6 meters to 8 meters of water. More than one million of Cambodians totally depend on the Tonle Sap. They find food by fishing on the lake and from agriculture on the flooded plains. They perform their ceremonies here and their festivals celebrate the lake and its fluctuating waters. In the village of Prektuol, the villagers fish and run crocodile farms. They use resources from the lake to feed the reptiles but also to supply the aquaculture cages, sometimes installed right under the floors of the houses.
This occupation is a bit different for one young woman who uses a canoe to access the flooded forest in order to check her nets. Forced to take over this activity because her husband is handicapped, she sometimes also works as a guide for scientists coming into the area. She explains here the way of traditional fish trap works. Thanks to a system of several tanks and bottlenecks, the fish are ultimately trapped. The members of the family explain that they have always used traditional traps and deplore the proliferation of fine mesh nets by newcomers, whose numbers always increases. For them, the strict policy of seizure of any nets not in conformity with the law is a good initiative. It is important to control fishing because the stakes are high. The Tonle Sap provides 60% of Cambodia's total catch and constitutes a major contributor to food security. Fishing activities, including fishing lots, also covered up to 80% of the perimeter of the lake until 2000. Giant capture systems including strange structures cover the lake and produce an outstanding yield. This landscape of bamboo traps, tangles of nets and massive structures stopping the flow of water is not the only concern. The demographic explosion and the tourism boom in Cambodia have moved the population towards the cities. This has in turn increased and delocalized water requirements. Siem Reap province, for instance, occupies a key area of the lake and is a key factor in the tourist industry. Today, irrigation projects abound on its periphery. After 30 years of war and unrest, Cambodia needs to rebuild its road network and irrigation canals. These structures have never been listed before, but they are now an area of focus for scientific studies aimed at answering one vital question. What is their impact? <laughs>